I'm Edward P. Krenzelak. I'm director of the Pittsburgh Poison Center, located in Pittsburgh, a division of the uh, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. And I'm a professor of pharmacy and pediatrics at the University of Pittsburgh, and also the uh, uh, Gordon J. Vanskoy Endowed Chair in Pharmacy. So I have a lot of different titles at the University of Pittsburgh. What we're discussing when we think about oleander, and we need to put that in sort of a generic term, oleander. And oleander, there's nerium oleander, which is grown in the United States, which is an ornamental plant. You'll find it especially in the southern states, so along boulevards, if you're driving to Disneyland. It's often mistaken for Thevisia peruviana, which is yellow oleander. And it's responsible for a large number of fatalities but that's often confused then, it's oleander. So we hear nerium oleander, what do you think? Bad, poisonous, very toxic, when in fact it really isn't. One of the very common myths that we hear is about one leaf will kill a child, and I can't think of a single plant, any plant, whether it's jimson weed or whether it's nerium or whether it's any other plant that's deemed to be toxic, where one leaf, the ingestion of one leaf will be fatal. There are the myths about Boy Scouts that went out and had a fire to roast weenies and they took oleander switches, stripped all the leaves off, took their knife and cut a little point on it so they could shove the wiener on and then roasted the wiener over the fire and died as a consequence of being exposed to nerium oleander. Strictly a myth. If I have one word of advice to people is don't believe everything you read on the internet, especially as it relates to plants, especially as it relates to nerium oleander, because much of the information is inaccurate and potentially dangerous. Well, I have a database, and this database is, represents data from the American Association of Poison Control Centers and involves 668,111 cases, if you can imagine that. It's a very large database, and these are all ingestions of plants. Let me put this into perspective for you. Uh, in about 2.3 million plant exposures over roughly the last 25 years, there have only been 43 deaths due to plant ingestions in the United States. None of them have involved nerium oleander, not one. Hello, my name is Bob Newman. I'm a research scientist, a pharmacologist by training. Um, I received my education in New England at various schools, including Vermont Medical Center, um, and did a year of research at Stanford University in California, followed by 24 years at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. So as a pharmacologist and toxicologist, my primary concern was one of safety. That we knew that there are components within nerium oleander that had the potential for toxicity in high enough concentrations, but within a skin cream, this was very, very important that we identify safety concerns first. So first and foremost, what we did was to do a safety study in a clinical setting. That is, with application of nerium AD to the skin, we used the most sensitive type of analytical instrument, tandem mass spectrometry, to define whether, in fact, there were any detectable nanogram levels of the cardiac glycoside within the systemic circulation after application to the skin. Tried our best, validated analytical system, could find no oleandrin or other cardiac glycosides present in the human plasma from these volunteers who applied this to their skin. Without absorption through the skin into the systemic circulation, we deem this to be a safe product. That, together with past studies where we were intentionally uh, administering cardiac glycosides for treatment of cancer, um, showed the great safety to topical application of this. Now, a great surprise and delight to us was the fact that in these safety studies, we started seeing improvement uh, in certain skin effects in individuals, and that is reduction of wrinkles, uh, in, improvement uh, of sunspots, um, reduction in intensity of colored uh, spots within the skin, uh, which led us to believe that there may be potential here for uh, a more normal application uh, as a cosmetic uh, cream applied to the skin for health and beauty benefits. My name is Milton Tenenbaum. Uh, I am a pediatric toxicologist. My appointment is at the 
University of Manitoba Faculty of Medicine where I'm a professor of pediatrics and a professor of pharmacology. The concern about, about Nerium AD is the, its key active ingredient which comes from the oleander plant. The oleander plant has a, 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 what we call a glycoside in it, a, a chemical that can directly affect the heart and cause uh, uh, the heart to beat out of rhythm. However, there isn't enough oleandrin in an entire bottle of, uh, of Nerium AD to have any effect at all on the heart. So there should not be any concern whatsoever uh, about using this product. The fundamental uh, principle of toxicology is any, anything is poisonous. It just depends on the dose. So if, if one ate too much sugar, too much salt, uh, one could uh, have uh, poisoning from that and indeed die. Toxicity in adults has been uh, uh, looked at and giving a dose of 10.2 10, uh, uh, milligrams to an adult uh, was found to have no toxic effect. And, and again, we can do similar extrapolations to a 10 kilogram child, a one-year-old, and that dose, to achieve that dose, the child would have to ingest approximately 400 bottles of Nerium AD to again achieve a non-toxic dose of uh, oleandrum in the body. In terms of uh, uh, poisoning of young children from creams and ointments, I've never in 40 years of uh, practice, uh, uh, either personally or through my poison center in terms of taking inquiries, have ever had a case of toxicity from the ingestion of a, of a cosmetic cream or ointment. I, I personally think it's important for people to know uh, that this agent is not poisonous simply because there isn't enough oleandrin in a, in a whole bottle to cause any sort of a biologic effect. Uh, and, and particularly when we're discussing children, uh, they don't have the ability to uh, consume significant quantities of any cream or ointment. And finally, this bottle is very difficult to open for adults, so it's uh, safe to, uh, to assume that it would even be much more difficult for an infant or toddler due to their limited neurodevelopmental abilities. My name is uh, Wallace Winters. I'm, uh, I'm an MD, PhD, Emeritus Professor from the University of California uh, School of Medicine, Department of Medical Toxicology and Pharmacology and Anesthesiology, and former uh, Medical Officer for the Food and Drug Administration for the Pacific Region. As a toxicologist, I had concerned, concerns about the potential toxicity of this oleander in, in the product. There, there, are, there are other interesting uh, comparisons of uh, safe products that, that contain potential toxic ingredients. Uh, potatoes, tomatoes uh, contain uh, chemicals that could produce toxicity. All chemicals and drugs are, are poisons and uh, it's the dose that matters. I was especially awakened to this fact by reviewing uh, the, the literature on Botox, which is probably one of the most toxic chemicals we have, and yet it's, it has been possible to adjust the dose to a level that is relatively safe to use in, in thousands of patients. The Nerium product, as a result of uh, the studies that, that we designed and did, uh, indicated that there was no evidence of toxicity uh, and no evidence that the oleandrin was absorbed through the skin. So therefore, uh, my conclusion is that it's, the Nerium product is perfectly safe to use. I'm um, Ron Eamon. I am clinical director for ST&T Research and I'm involved in managing the clinical trials that come to our company. My involvement in the studies um, go over a period of several years. We have studied five different formulations, uh, all containing NAE8. This was one of the most efficacious products I've ever been associated with. We did five studies, 155 subjects, 
and on average, we saw statistically significant changes in the appearance of deep lines, the appearance of fine lines, and the appearance of emerging lines. That is to say, they were all reduced after 14 days of treatment and then 28 days of treatment. Additionally, with regard to discoloration of the face, these same subjects showed statistically significant decreases in the appearance of discoloration and pigment spots. In addition to efficacy, I, I want to mention the safety of the product, which of course is equally important. We discovered that during the course of the studies, one very, very important thing, and that was that the glycosides in the NAE8, that is the active ingredients, did not pass through the skin barrier. It could not be found in the blood, suggesting that this was a very safe product. We went further based on the safety data, which included heart rate, pulse, temperature, physical exams, and so forth. We took all that data and prepared what's known as a generally regarded as safe dossier. This dossier was given to independent researchers who are expert in the field, and we asked them to give us an opinion on the safe level of use of this product. And they concluded that this was a very safe product to use, and that even if someone used more than a half a tube a day, which is like two weeks worth of stuff, and used that for the rest of their lives, they would still be within generally regarded as safe levels.